<laughs> and uh, it's uh, U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service Fish Enhancement Mitigation and Research Fund Single Arm Solution Project Implementation. Stream restoration as well as the wetland restoration project. Um, as part of a hydro licensing settlement, as I already mentioned, the Fish Enhancement Mitigation Research Fund. As part of that fund, our office has been working to identify stream restoration projects as well as wetland projects in cooperation between the ESF and put those projects on the ground. So today, I just have a brief background of the camera, kind of the working parts, many of the individuals that are involved in that fund are actually here today. And then I just wanted to talk about um, projects that we're working to develop based on two major ephemera funded efforts. The St. Lawrence River Tributary Evaluations, which our office is spearheading, looking to evaluate um, potential barriers in these systems up and down the St. Lawrence, across uh, Jefferson, St. Lawrence, and even Franklin County. And then as part of our fish habitat conservation strategy, um, in cooperation with SUNY NSF and Dr. John Farrell and his staff, they're working in the wetland systems along the St. Lawrence River um, as part of this uh, adaptive management strategy. So the FEMRAP is the um, large settlement with uh, the New York Power Authority during the license of the Robert Mills Power Dam on the St. Lawrence River. Basically, those funds are dedicated to improve fishery resources in the St. Lawrence River as well as the lake, as well as uh, the eastern end of Lake Ontario. The funds are managed by the service. Um, the two major groups that uh, I work closely with are our Fishery Advisory Committee. So a group of folks from DEC, St. Regis, uh, USPS, uh, New York Power Authority, basically assisting in the decision making as proposal design projects are submitted. And we also have our co-working group, um, a group of folks that are dedicated to just reducing immortality down the system with, with um, uh, guided studies in the same way. This will probably be my only plug for um, lake surgeon, but the uh, FEMRA to actually assist with the, the state's effort to stop lake surgeon. Our um, Genoa National Fish Hatchery actually assists with uh, rearing and raising those fish. They're actually transported back to the river and um, stop them as well. But the projects I'll talk today are primarily uh, focused on um, northern pike, muskie, and walleye. So the project that I've been mostly closely involved with is our trip evaluation design. Beginning back in 2009, we really just wanted to develop a project where we would have a clear understanding of which barriers are in these um, streams and tributaries of the St. Lawrence River. Um, prior to that, we really had no knowledge of you know, what type of barriers existed. Um, and then beginning in 2012, at the request of our Fishery Advisory Committee, we started to incorporate fish habitat as well as fish community um, assessments to kind of assist with um, decision making as projects turned up. And the whole goal of this project was at the end to have a list of known barriers and other restoration projects that we could use best response to implement. So this is just kind of a breakdown of those three different types of assessments. You know, we start with our barrier evaluations, looking at all the major road intersections, all natural barriers, all um, privately owned areas. We spend a lot of our time working with private landowners in this area. The protocols that we initially adhered to were ones that were developed by the Lake Champlain ba uh, Basin Institute at Sunni Plattsburgh, but since then we've also incorporated um, protocols developed by the North Atlantic Aquatic Connectivity Collaborative and um, have assisted in entering sites uh, based on their protocols and their database as well. And we wanted to basically just have a list of sites based on their their passability of these two most high-ranking sites and potential projects on the river. Our habitat assessment portion. Um, based on the staggered approach where we take year one and we kind of just hit the ground and look at all the known barriers. And then in year two, we come back and based on the location of those known barriers, we can focus our um, efforts in terms of our habitat and um, fish community. Uh, we also use this opportunity to identify um, other restoration projects such as eroding banks and ag influence. The yeah, fish community analysis we do split into two different categories. We do our resident fish in the uh, summer months, standard backpack, electrofishing. Um, and our migratory fish work is done in the spring using this trap net that's in the background. So essentially we block off the entire stream. Um, we take trap nets and remove the leader, put on this larger mesh size uh, wing, and um, catch everything that's coming up these systems, tag um, our target species, let them go and see what extent um, they use these systems, and that is 
ice in the background. So <laughs> they're obviously not crying on sampling submissions. And I mentioned here that we have taken all of our fish data and actually mm -hmm. contributed to the New York State's uh, fisheries data. Here. So I have a series of maps that kind of just show the progression of the trip evaluations, um, kind of um, the two major sections that we've been working on. We've got the upper and lower river. The upper river, um, kind of the oblong circle there, is strictly ephemeral funded, 100%. We did the evaluations and we plan to push forward and develop these projects. The lower river is um, a relatively new project that we started in 2015 in partnership with the Natural Resource Damage Assessment Fund, the Contamin Settlement Fund along the St. Lawrence. So FEMRF's job was to basically replicate what we did in the upper river and look at potential barriers and habitat and tributaries to four major rivers. Uh, we looked at the grass, the rapid, the salmon, and the St. Regis River. Um, one of the other differences on the upper river portion is we chose, for the sake of time, we chose to do our evaluations below the first major impoundment, with the only obvious exception being the Hogan's birthday. So, yeah, so, to date, between the upper and lower river, we've evaluated almost uh, 600 individual potential barriers. The kind of stoplight color scheme there just shows the passability, so the reds. Um, dots show those sites that show the greatest impact for uh, fish movement. Um, in the upper river, um, we found 39 of these potential barriers for fish, including the um, natural barriers. And then on the lower river, almost kind of an equal break number of sites. But once you start drilling down and just looking at the locations of these high rate barriers, you can get a sense of how much of these trips are inaccessible and how much habitat is actually restricted to migratory fish in the river. Um, prior to any restoration hitting the ground, um, we had uh, 252 miles of stream um, that were inaccessible for fish. If you exclude the natural barriers, we were down to 103. And then to date, we've actually developed um, three fish passage restoration projects uh, in partnership with our partners for Fish and Wildlife Program. And we've restored about 30 miles of stream thus far. Um, no work has been done in the lower river. Um, essentially, we have to give uh, our information to a uh, group of uh, trustees that actually will ultimately decide which projects they want to implement. But at this point, it looks like they've already engaged our partner program, so we can kind of expect similar uh, work to be done in the lower river. These just show the uh, locations of those um, three completed projects, the White Stars. So like I said, we restored about 30 miles of stream. We plan to add uh, 16 miles to that uh, this year with one project down in um, Mullet Creek in Jefferson County. This just shows those three completed fish passage projects, all of which our partners for Fish and Wildlife Program has developed. The first two, pretty straightforward, finding a barrier, putting a bottomless arch culvert in to allow for upstream passage. We're fortunate that in out years we can actually do some follow-up um, monitoring, and in both cases we were able to document upstream passage for um, walleye noted pike in the first scenario and for re resident noted pike in the second scenario. Uh, the second, the third project wasn't as straightforward. Um, we basically had a first culvert with an associated wetland upstream, so we couldn't necessarily just throw a culvert in there and drain that wetland. So our partners guys uh, designed a culvert with a series of baffles that maintained that water surface elevation for that wetland and that would allow for upstream um, passage for uh, northern pike. This site is currently being monitored by us. This is the uh, upcoming fish passage project that we're hoping to get on the ground um, this June. It's a single project, but has two different sites uh, that we're looking to work on. We're working with private landowner as well as the um, county department to notch out a concrete sill underneath the county bridge and also remove some debris um, on a collapsed dam to allow upstream passage for Northern Pike. This project will improve passage for uh, 16 miles per pike. This is located in uh, Jefferson County, um, right outside of um, Fisher's Landing. This project is uh, slated to start sometime this month. It's kind of a combination project for installing some hard substrate, artificial spine um, bed for walleye. This site is located upstream of a culvert that we've already replaced back in 2010, so we know that uh, Pike had access to this habitat. 
Um, we also want to do some stabilization um, to reduce the erosion of this bank here. Um, again, our partners guys will be um, uh, assisting the development of this project, um, and then we'll be able to follow up after the completion of this project to um, evaluate it. So I included the Fort Coddington Dam removal on the Salmon River. It's not necessarily associated with our trip evaluation, but in terms of restored three miles, it's probably one of the most successful projects that Femmer has funded. Um, collaborative effort with the town of Fort Coddington as well as St. Regis Mohawk Tribe. Um, since the removal of this in 2009, there's been some post mitigation studies to um, look at fish response as well as macro invertebrates and not uh, freshwater mussels in this system. And if we fast forward, we've actually did the uh, Fish barrier evaluations and habitat evaluations upstream of this site in um, 2016. So switching gears to our fish habitat conservation strategy, this is again a partnership with uh, SUNY ESF, an adaptive management strategy that um, basically they set on the river and evaluate these wetlands prioritize these wetlands for um, restoration that may have been influenced by the water regulations in the river. And then the second phase is where Fish and Wildlife Service picks up these projects and develops these tools that SUNY has, has developed. Um, they want to put these tools on the ground that basically um, improve um, reproductive and approval processes for mostly assassins but also um, uh, walleye as well. So I'll spend the majority I'm talking about the implementation portion of this data management strategy, but just to kind of complete the loop, SUNY ESF then follows up with these projects, evaluates them, we can adjust our approach. I'll actually outline the scenario where we um, have adjusted the project um, based on their results. So these are some of the examples of the tools that they've developed. We have regulated marshes, um, basically constructing a berm or installing or in some cases repairing a water control structure to maintain water surface elevations independently of that of the river. We have um, channel and pool excavation projects, which I'll show a project um, that's actually going to be under construction in a couple weeks. I've already shown two examples of the barrier removal um, projects that we've worked on. And we also do um, watershed protection by land acquisition with partnership with the Thousand Island Land Trust and Plain. So these are a handful of uh, wetland projects that the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service has been involved in. We have some channeling and excavation work on Club Island, in between Club Island and um, Grindstone. <laughs> uh, and then we also have another um, regulated uh, marsh project in Delaney, uh, Delaney Marsh, similar project on the mainland in uh, uh, Butterfield Marsh. And then we have a collaborative project with some channeling and pot mulling um, with uh, DU um, and French Creek. I mean, we have a handful of projects that are still kind of in the development phase with partners. So these kind of just show um, the images of the fish ladder and the lane marsh. Um, and these regulated marshes didn't really necessarily have the, the effect of fish that we were hoping. Um, numbers were down for um, adults as well as out, um, out migrating juveniles. But one of the positive um, things that we can see is kind of the vegetation response to these structures. Um, the, really restricting the catch of it becoming the dominant um, plant in these systems and having a little bit more diversity on the uh, regulated side of the marsh. So because of those results, we've actually transitioned and we'll probably, we will be um, doing more of the channeling and excavation work that we can see in Blind Bay here. These channels have been shown to be, when compared to reference channels, there's no significant difference based on usage. And even in higher water years, they've actually been shown to um, be better and more usage for um, um, northern pike. So it'd be interesting to kind of develop these projects and plan up plan 2014 gets developed for the fish response to be in these channels as well. Uh, just a, some quick numbers just to kind of show. Um, so based on the four, I'm sorry, the six completed projects the US Fish and Wildlife has been involved in, we've um, impacted about 224 acres. Uh, we've excavated about 15,000 um, uh, feet in channel. In terms of land acquisition, we have a couple hundred acres of land um, between uh, Jefferson and uh, St. Lawrence County. And then the projects in the gray are actually potential projects, one of which um, is set to undergo construction this month, which is actually this project in Cranberry Creek. Uh, these photos were taken just um, a couple weeks ago. 
want to, the tool that we're using to develop this project is the channeling and excavation um, toolkit to improve um, northern pike mean and landings turtle habitat and systems. So we've hired a contractor to get out there on the marsh and excavate the material and build um, two to three foot spoil mounds within the marsh, um, help improve water quality, increase um, plant diversity, and, um, and all together we have about Four, about 4.3 acres of popples that are on the land being constructed. And then the last project that I have is the uh, Kent Street Spawning um, Enhancement Project. This was done in 2014 by our partners, guys, basically constructing an engineered uh, ripple, um, a Newberry ripple, to um, increase um, walleye <coughs> spawning. Um, he assessed the post monitoring and found uh, increased uh, egg to larval survival when compared to the natural spawning. Bed and actually a higher amount of uh, larval out migrating from this spawning bed. So we're kind of going to kind of replicate what we've completed here in the little sucker book project that I showed earlier. And just a quick sum up, um, basically the color of the stream shows which information that we have. So everything you see in green, we have all the fish barrier, habitat, and fish community data to date. Um, the, red, uh, the red streams show those rivers that just have the fish barrier. Basically these rivers are um, too deep just use waveful streams. And ultimately, we just kind of want to push forward and develop these projects. Um, so we have one fish passage project here in Augensburg that will be completed this month. Um, and yeah, we'll keep pushing forward and keep getting the monitoring, and we'll have a uh, more success to share with you. Acknowledgements, um, just one of the service partner programs we see, Thousand Island Trust, and I'll be <laughs> that that portion 